ఈఎస్సి ప్రిలిమ్స్ టూ థౌజండ్ నైన్టీన్ గీస్ అండ్ ఎక్స్ప్లెనేషన్ కరెంట్ అఫేర్స్ పార్ట్ వీకెన్సీ ఫస్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ ఈజ్ అబౌట్ ముద్ర బ్యాంక్ విచ్ ఆఫ్ ద ఫాలోయింగ్ కమ్స్ అండర్ ద ఆఫరింగ్స్ ఆఫ్ ముద్ర బ్యాంక్ పోర్ట్ఫోలియో క్రెడిట్ గ్యారంటీ క్రెడిట్ ఫర్ లార్జ్ ఇండస్ట్రీస్ ముద్ర కార్డ్ క్రెడిట్ ఎన్హాన్స్మెంట్ దిస్ క్వశ్చన్ సీమ్స్ టు బి లిటిల్ కాంప్లికేటెడ్ మెన్ బీ సి దిస్ వర్డ్స్ బట్ ఇఫ్ యూ ఎగ్జామిన్ ద ఆప్షన్స్ this can be handled simply mudra was in news many times last year government has launched a new scheme called mudra scheme and there was a bank by name mudra bank this stands for micro units development and refinancing agency bank the function of the bank is to refinance it does not directly give loans but it refinance the loans given by micro finance institutions and non banking financial institutions which are providing credit to msme msme is micro small and medium enterprises so large enterprises are not included here micro small and medium enterprises are denoted by the term msme so this bank is mainly to encourage the msmes we can directly roll out this second statement it is not for large industries so the options with the two is a c and d we can directly cut out these three options so we are le- left with only b so b should be the answer so even though we don't know each and every detail about mudra bank and its offerings we can answer this question question which of the following is or are key reasons for encouraging startup entrepreneurship innovations focusing on service industry bringing values of proactivity to the society yes startup is about innovations people having new idea can start their own business government will give a support by way of the scheme startup india scheme focusing on service industry so innovations are not es- essentially linked to the service industry it can be in any sector so this statement will be wrong bringing the values of proactivity to the society yes people who are willing to take initiative are given encouragement not every people so people are encouraged to take up innovations or people are encouraged to start new enterprises so this statement will also be correct so from the options 1 and 3 we say c so if you know that uh, the startup india scheme is not only focusing on service we can directly cut two options b and c from 1 and c we can go for c because this startup will encourage the proactivity also next question which of the following are main objectives of gold monetization scheme launched in the country first to monetize gold holdings in the country to increase export of gold from the country to reduce india's import bill to meet the targets of reduction in fiscal deficit this gold monetization scheme was also in news many times and what is this scheme this scheme encourages people to deposit gold and this gold can be put into productive use instead of idling in the households this gold can be put to productive use and india is one of the major importer of the gold in trade current account deficit is there when our import bill is more than the export bill we will face current account deficit for bridging their current account deficit we should reduce the import bill so the long term objective of the scheme is to reduce country's reliance on import of gold for meeting our demand we have enough gold in our country but this move will help the jewelry sector also they will get gold from domestic market itself and it will help in export and the two options correct as per the codes so the two most 
appropriate coder 1 and 3 and this will help in increasing export but it is not a direct objective intended and uh, it helps to meet the targets of reduction in current account deficit not the fiscal deficit so 1 and 3 option D is the answer Which of the following are salient features of the Patent Act of 1970? It codifies the inventions which are not patentable. It provides for endorsement of patent with words license of right. It provides for revocation of patents in public interest. It has provision for validity period also for the patents. So regarding the Patent Act, this Patent Act is uh, the first Patent Act which was enacted in 1970 after that amendments has come. So, these issues related with this patenting, compulsory licensing, evergreening, etc. will be in use. Why we need amendment for this act? Because this original act was criticized to be more inclined towards protecting the public interest. We know that patents protect the commercial right. It protects the commercial interest. So, when it is more inclined towards the public interest, commercial interest will be side aligned. So, there was a cry from the industrial sector to amend, amend the act. So, that in 2005, parliament passed the act to meet the obligation under WTO TRIPS agreement. So, this amendment has changed many of the provisions like compulsory licensing and what are the patentable inventions like those controversial terms have been changed in the recent act. The considering the original act, it deals in comprehensively about different aspects of the act. It covers the inventions which are not patentable. It deals about how to surrender and revoke the patent. Even though patent is allotted, if it is find, found against the public interest, there is provision for calling back the patent also. And when a patent comes with the word license of right, it means that patent holder and the license holder have to come up come in an agreement about the usage of the patent irrespective of the license that the holder has. So coming to the question, it, this covers comprehensively almost all the terms related with the patent. And it has provisions for the validity period of the patents also. So the option is 1, 2, 3 and 4 is the answer.